news everybody, Pernak here, and this week I'm going to do a review. I'm doing something I think every artist should have. Right here. Easels. I am going to do, oh, the Jack, come on, there we go. You can see it better. The Jack Richardson Liptus Wood Lobo Easel. Now when I worked at Daniel Smith, um, we sold a lot of easels. And the Lobo easel was always my most favorite easel to sell to any customer. It's just the most versatile one that I could ever enjoy. Um, and then they came out with, there was the oak version and the Liptus version. And the major difference is one is oak, so it has that oak color, that honey oak color as a stain. Um, and then it has the Liptus wood, which has this dark, it's like a... Um, normally what color you'd see cherry wood stain like a darker kind of reddish tone on it so it's a very dark color and it's actually a really nice green they call it a green wood it's ecologically friendly they come from tree plantations they're kind of a fast growing tree it's a combination uh hybrid of a eucalyptus and something else they say what it is um doesn't say, but the trees can be harvested in little as three, uh, not three, sorry, 15 years, what they say, and it's harder than oak. And it's a really nice wood. It's got a really nice tight grain. So I am going to go ahead and I'm going to put this bad boy together and I'll show you guys me putting it together too so you can see it. And then I'll talk even more about all the really great things about this easel. All right, everyone. I don't, you can kind of see me here. I actually had to jerry rig this camera so I can try and get the whole thing being assembled. And it's not really difficult to do this. Um, as a matter of fact, when I pulled it out of the box, this is how everything was. This is saran wrap, this is saran wrap right here, here, and here, and then this is taped on. There's saran wrap under here. This was the only loose part. One little knob. And I believe this is an extra knob so they actually give you an extra knob this is this is why i like this company they they take care of all their stuff and they guarantee all their products um the liptus one doesn't have the same guarantee as the oak one does but i will tell you right now this one is less expensive which is another reason i like this one um all the jack richardson products at least the oak ones are made here in the United States. This is made in Brazil because that's where I think they have the um, uh, tree farms at or down in Brazil. So that's why they're made down there and they are a little bit less expensive. About 50 bucks is what I would say if I remember correctly. But like I said, it comes pretty much already complete. There's not much you have to do for installation. So I'm just going to cut this very carefully so I don't cut the wood up. And as you can see, like I said, it's got really nice fine grain wood here. And it's just, it's a good wood. And I really have always liked this stuff. And it comes with this great color. And this is the natural color of said wood. So if you like something that like has a nice looking stain or something on it, this is the wood for you. All right. And it comes, like I said, pretty much pre-assembled. There's very little assembly needed to do this. So this is the first part right here, as you can see. Let's set that off to the side for a moment. I'm going to cut this open, be very careful with it. Not that it really should matter. It's an easel. It's going to get covered in paint anyways. My old easel was horribly covered in paint. Um, but I ended up donating it when I moved because I just... I didn't have the space to move it. And this is all the extra knobs and things. Or these are the knobs that you need. Now, if I remember correctly, you don't need any tools for this. Okay, those are the knobs more knobs oh we will need a screwdriver that is the one tool we will need a phillips head phillips head screwdriver went and got my phillips screwdriver because it's the only one i'm going to need 
and let's see here. And then we got this piece here. This is the back brace. And as you can see, it's got the little routed thing on there, so it slides. Set that off to the side also. These off to the side. And then this is the diesel part. Right here, here's the grip. Or where the eat uh, where a uh, canvas will sit and then this is the easel part right here as you can see first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this part right here this thing is barely big enough to fit on here <clears throat> but you pull it out like this and this whole easel is considered a collapsible easel which is one of the reasons it's really nice because you can collapse it up and put it in a small area but it also has like this has got a shelf space on it which is really nice and then that's all you need to do for this part and i realize i said this is all you need to do for this part and open this up i'm actually going to fold it back up uh like this so it comes back down right here. And I don't know if you can see, but right here there are three little tiny holes. And that's what this is for. You see it's got a hinge on the back of it. And we're going to simply take this hinge and I'm going to have to go put it like this. And then you're going to put the screws in. And they give you three little brass wood screws. I'm going to hold this piece up and just start them in. You can do this with a screwdriver or you could actually use a... Um, a drill with a screw bit on it but it goes in easy enough because the holes are pre-drilled for you so you don't have to do anything special for them you don't have to drill anything or anything like that I remember when I worked at Daniel Smith one of the problems was some of the desk that we would get in the drafting desk we had to pre-drill all the holes and I hated doing that because it just took so much longer to do it because when you're a salesperson and you got to assemble to make a display that's an hour two hours you're off the sales floor which is not a good thing for you yes this is helping you in the long run to make a sale but it doesn't help if someone else comes around and sells that desk that you just spent an hour building but this these things they don't take very long uh, I think I've built one in 15 minutes before they're not very difficult to do put that right there and then we're going to put it together and assemble it I realized as I was starting to assemble this that there is no way you're going to be able to see the top of this thing getting assembled. So we're just going to take, I'm going to take this piece that we just put together here, pull that out like that, pull this up a little so it sits like that. And that way you have that there. Now, one of the major differences between the liptus and the oak as you can see here on the side rail right here and it's got these little brass inserts the oak one does not have this um, it's actually just completely routed out and you have two little um, it doesn't have the little pre-drilled holes. It doesn't have pre-little anything. This is just, you can see straight through here. So it does create a small stability issue for it. This one is actually more stable than the oak one in my opinion. And then in that bag that I opened up, I've got one of these right here. And it's just the basic piece right here, as you can see. And how this works, it's pretty easy actually. I 
So when you grab this piece, because this is the top here, this right here has got the part that's got routed, and that kind of just slides right on top of that. But this is the other thing that's collapsible. As you notice, right here, you can't see it that easily, there is a, another insert, a brass insert right here and here. If you can see it, you can't see it. Let's show that to you. Right here, as you can see, that brass insert. And that is where these are going to go. So you have these right here. And they do give you instructions on how to build this thing too. Right here, all the instructions. It's pretty, it's not difficult to really do. Um, so basically, when you grab it, put the thingy. So we got these, we take this, we got our two washers. Doesn't really matter, but I'm going to put the black one closest to the, the knob there. And then you feed it through here, and you actually have to screw it through. If you can see right here, you put it right where this bolt is, and you screw it through. And since this bolt and knob has two pieces that are threaded right here and here, um, you really don't have to worry too much about it right here because it threads through this one and then once it gets through you're fine and you do want to do you don't want to thread it through all the way just yet because it can be difficult to do this you want to feed it through just enough right here and you put this this little piece here you just put it right on the end here and you'll want to do both sides because it will make your life easier. And it's been a few years since I built one of these easels, but they were never... Hmm, got the washers. I always forget little things like that sometimes. As you see this piece here, like this, what that does is it sits inside those rails on the other piece. I hope I don't drop things, right? So we're going to take this. Ow. Make sure this part is this way. And you can actually kind of set that little beam right on the ground to help guide you with this. And when you do this, you're going to twist these in here just like that. So those beams sit right there. And now you can control the height of right here and here, right here and here, where you want your easel to bend at. I'm going to go more towards the middle right here. So I'm going to go one, two, three, there's five holes. I'm going to do the fifth hole. And you just kind of feed this through until it feeds through this insert, right? The insert right here. And this is the one, this is the reason I like this one more than the uh, Oak Lobo because now this actually has a solid pivot right here and it can't move. The other one could move on you if you hit it hard enough. Um, I mean, you know, and you had to really torque them down too. And the nice thing about any of these easels, if you write to Richardson or Jack Richardson company, they can at least get you parts. If you break a knob, 
guess what? You can order a new knob. All right, so then this is the second part. Which is basically, it looks like another one of these things. But what you're going to do is you're going to unscrew this. And it's basically a carriage bolt. And I call it a carriage bolt because it's got the four ends here that are squared off and meant to be put into like a square hole. We're going to rotate this up. Put this in here like this. As you notice, these guides are going to come together. You're going to put this right here. And thread the bolt right through it. And there is a hole, if you look right here. There is a hole in the bottom one down here. So you want to line that up and you want to get this bolt through. Um, it might be a carriage bolt, but it doesn't always seem to work really, really great for this. You have to really, you have to really pull, really twist this down really, really tight until the bolt actually kind of sinks into the plastic. Um, don't try it too much because you can break this piece and you don't want to do that. And I'm just going to loosen this. And this is basically right here as it slides you can put you can put this entire thing at different angles you can go completely flat completely horizontal or somewhere in between which is one like i said this is one of the reasons i like this easel i like this easel because a as a printmaker sometimes i need a second table i've got myself a table now that actually folds up and can go into a decently small space And we got that. And actually pull this all the way up. Turn this around so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. And right here on the back, if you look right here, there's two pre drilled holes right here. And you grab your last baggie full of stuff. And then you can pull this piece completely out, actually. Let's go ahead and do that. Maybe. Like this right here as you can see the two pre-drilled holes and you put this just like that and you screw them down and you want to make sure this little L piece bracket faces up like this and now this is a safety thing that they put on here and it's to prevent the um, this part from coming going down too far and breaking which is why they have it although I don't know why they do because if you look at the end down here they've got another one right here so you want to twist this down and tighten this down and set that actually off to the side because and we're going to do this piece right here. That is probably why there's supposed to be two knobs. There are supposed to be two knobs. And I got to find. All right. After a little digging in the box, this was kind of under one of the flaps right here. And that goes on this piece right here with that. When I said they gave me an extra knob, I didn't realize that it was not an extra knob. It's actually the thing. For this bottom piece this is actually quite simple to do you put this as you can see it's got the small side you put that right in there right above the hole and it does have a square hole right here so your carriage bolt fits perfectly into it 
and then you just twist this on. Now, you don't want to tighten these down all the way. And once you do that, this side with the little bumpers on it is the top. So you're going to slide this like so. You want to loosen them up just enough to slide it basically all the way down, which is this little metal piece right here is what stops it. And this will adjust your height of where you put your easel at. So just tighten that down to where you want it. And these easels, I always tighten it down on the bottom like this. So it stays. You don't need to make it super tight. You just need to put it just tight enough. And then we got this piece here. And we're just going to slide that in there. And that's pretty much almost done. So now what we're going to do is we're going to tilt this out. And if you look at the back here, sometimes it's hard to tell where the camera's pointing. Right here. Right here, there's a hole. And I don't know if you can actually see it. You put this through the hole. And this will keep this piece from sliding up and down and back and forth. But if you actually look at it much more closely, there's a little metal plate here, which just gets pushed up against this backside here and holds it tight. So I've taken to holding the camera at this particular moment in time, just going over the easel so you can see it more easily. Don't need all that. So as you can see, here's the top of it. And if you look around the back, there's that part. And that's the safety thing right there. Why it's really there, I don't know. And when I was talking earlier about the bolts, you can see them right there along the side. And like I said, this is one of the reasons I like this, this easel, is because it tilts. And so when I do everything, it just goes straight flat, like so. And it's basically a big old table, which is one of the reasons I like this. It's a nice hard wood, lip disc, it folds up pretty small. The knobs, like I said, you can buy replacement knobs if you need to, like this. And like I said, you can go all the way up. And then, let's set you right here. As you can see right here, if you actually loosen this all the way out and unscrew it, and this is the only thing that is a little difficult with this easel, is you have to do both of these sides if you want to move it up or down. So if you want a taller easel, you need to do that. Or if you want a lower easel, if you're sitting at a chair. So you have to get both sides and get them off. And then you do have to move this up. get it going up. So if I want to move it up one, it's not too difficult to do. Don't need two people to do it, you can do it with one. So now my easel, as you can see, sits a little higher off the ground. And it still goes flat as you can see here. It's a very, 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 very nice easel and I've always been really happy with this easel. Um, like I said, it's one of the reasons I like to sell this one. And I'm not going to tighten these down too tight because I don't need to. So I can make this thing flat right here like so. 
Then, come around to the back side, normally what I'll do, is if I look down here, I'll just normally take my foot and kind of lift this up and we'll start to pull it up. So I can do this one handed. And as you can see, lift this thing up. I mean, it probably weighs about a good 30 or 40 pounds. It's decently lightweight. And it doesn't take up a whole lot of space. I can put it behind my little press or wherever I want to put it, and, you know, it's going to sit there very nicely. So now let's actually review this thing. Now, I've showed you how to assemble it, I've talked about it, but overall, what am I going to give this thing? I'm going to give this a four and a half out of five stars. It's got great construction. It is very stable, but it is a little difficult to adjust the the sliding up and down on it. Uh, the oak version is a little easier to adjust because you don't have to completely take it out and put it in the screw holes because that's just completely, like you saw here, routed through. So these holes right here, this entire groove is just see-through. So it's more like two clamps that sit there and squeeze it together. It's less stable than this, than the, than the Lobo, but it is easier to adjust. And I would also give that one four and a half stars based on that. Both really great quality. Um, nice thing about them, nice hard woods. They're gonna last a long time. It's not made of cheap wood. And if you do break something on it, you break a piece, you can contact Jack Richardson Company, you know? Uh, yeah, Jack Richardson and Company USA. And tell them which one you have, and they can get you the parts. You might have to pay for them, but you can at least get the parts. Um, when I worked at Daniel Smith, we always got the parts. And there was a reason I said I sold hundreds of these easels. I probably easily sold a hundred of them throughout my seven and a half years working there. And I never had one come back. They're just sturdy. They are really good. Um, like... Jack Richardson himself, as an artist, has a really big, huge, giant easel. And he is a big guy. Uh, I would say he's at least 250 pounds, six foot five or taller. And it shows him standing on one of his, on his very big easel that he sells, the biggest one that's going to handle all that. But he makes his stuff good and he does that purposefully because he believes in making a good quality product. The other thing, like I said, that's nice about this is it goes to him perfectly upright to different angles to ver perfectly flat so you can just put a piece of board or even a piece of gator board or something on it and turn it into a side table if you need a little extra space for a table which is the other thing that's really nice about this it also folds up really narrow where you can put it down someplace and put it behind a um, you can easily put it on the door, put it in a closet, so it's out of the way. It doesn't take up a lot of space when you're not using it. It also will have a very large easel. I'm going to actually take this out and put it out a little bit. So you can put a decently sized easel on this thing. And if I go all the way up, I mean, I'm hitting my ceiling before I get this thing all the way out. Um, and I, I wouldn't put it past here. But measuring from the top to the bottom, how big of an easel we can put on here, I want to say it's either five or six feet. Let's see here. 62 inches, five feet. You can put a, a five foot canvas on one of these things. And they are pretty stable it does wobble a little uh, and that is because it's not an h frame easel but you're trading off super stability of an h frame for more of the versatility of this one and like i said this is my favorite easel um i did not have one before i left washington when i moved back to michigan here i ordered one got rid of my old um kind of a cross between it a frame and an H frame Daniel Smith brand easel that I had. I left it in Washington. It took up too much space. Ordered this one and had it shipped to the house here. And 
I only paid about $219 for it. Sometimes you can get them a little cheaper, under $200. Sometimes they range anywhere from about $200 to a little under $200, like $190, $180 I've seen them on sale before, to about $250 depending on where you buy them from. And the oak version is even more expensive, normally around your $250 to $300 range. But overall, great easel. If you want something that's super versatile, this is the easel for you. Well, everyone, I want to thank you for watching the video. That's my review of the Richardson Lobo easel. I hope this video has helped you make a decision. If you're looking for an easel to purchase, which one you will purchase, hopefully it's this one. I, like I said, I highly recommend it. But as always, you can always support me by going to my um, links down below. You can give me a thumbs up on the video here. Or you can subscribe to me if you want to know when I do more videos. Uh, you can visit my Etsy shop if you actually want to purchase one of my prints. And then you can also follow me on my Tumblr, my Twitter, or my Instagram. And all those links are down below. Until next time, everyone. See ya. Bye.